You're an accomplished martial artist. You practice. You learn. Your goal is perfection. From the earliest of days, it's been the master-student relationship that has made perfection possible. It's attained by few. It's desired by many. Meet now Master Apo, a student of many masters, and now a master of many students. The stillness of this pond and the beauty and serenity of this environment is exactly how I feel when I practice my martial arts. However, that's not often the case for most modern day practitioners. The class you're about to watch focuses on seven training principles to become a highly successful martial artist. The beauty of this area represents the tradition of the martial arts, which is steeped in thousands and thousands of years of tradition. However, neither traditional approaches nor the Western method of teaching will enable you to become an effective martial artist. It is imperative that you develop modern scientific approaches to your training. Number two, and the second principle which is really important, is really understanding your role and your responsibilities as a martial artist, whether you're a student, instructor, or practitioner. It's important to understand what role you play in the learning process. Timing, timing of action and the proper timing, which is so critical to success in life, is another principle covered by this class that you're about to see. Again, as in life, it is essential that you develop the necessary balance and stability to ensure enhanced performance. Balance is also critical in today's busy lifestyle. Too often, as Westerners, our approach, or we get so involved in our process and we become process-oriented that the next principle being more goal-oriented and results-oriented to ensure successful outcomes is a significant principle. Developing muscle memory to the extent that your techniques can become more intuitive and spontaneous are very important. It'll free up your mind to get into the deeper essence and the aesthetic quality of martial arts, which is so beautiful. And finally, the seventh principle, nothing is going to be accomplishable without practice, practice, practice. And understanding exactly what that practice method involves is a key ingredient to success. Join us now in our class so that you too can venture into the world of developing and learning seven training principles for the highly successful martial artist. Okay, the purpose for today's session is to introduce you to 10 basic combination sets. This is the material that I've put together over many years of study of the art of Tang Sudo. It's been my observation that, as many of you know, you, it takes many years to become a qualified black belt, in, regardless what type of system we are training in. And after you become a black belt, it's important to be able to be continue your, to maintain your proficiency in the system, as well as to increase your skills. The techniques involved here will consist of all of the basic actions generally that are required to become a black belt in most of the major karate systems. You know the techniques. What you're not aware of are the basic combinations as I've put them together over the many years. Remember, my basic Principles for learning, to become a good student, and to become a good instructor, we need to look with the intent to learn. Rather than be dependent upon the dialogue involved in the class. All of the dialogue in the class is to enable you to see better. But you should really focus on my performance of the technique rather than expect me to explain how the techniques are done. The second principle, of course, which is really essential, is to listen with the intent to learn. Not just listening to my basic instruction, 
but listening to the sound of my techniques as I perform so you can get a good sense of the, those areas where you need to accentuate power versus where you need to practice your breathing and also the kind of listening that enables you to get a sense of the timing involved in the, tech, the application of the technique. Obviously, you look and listen with the intent to learn so that you can record exactly what you're being taught today. The purpose of doing that is to be able to recall instantly, visualize in your mind before you act exactly what it is you want your body to be prepared to, to do. That would be the fourth step. After you look and listen with the intent to learn, record, then you will mimic. You will mimic exactly those actions that I've either asked you to demonstrate or those which I've demonstrated myself. And then ultimately, of course, after this session, the key ingredient is practice, practice, practice. Are we ready? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, combination number one consists of the first two basic techniques involved in most hard style martial arts training techniques. They involve the lower block, and the reverse punch using a forward stance. So that's what I, what I would like you to perform at this time, moving forward with your left foot. Ready? Continue moving forward. On the turn. So that's fairly simple to learn. These are the two basic techniques you learn when you're a beginner, as a white belt. Let's proceed now with following up with the second part of this combination, which begins with a front kick. You begin with a front kick, shoop, shoop, chia, follow with a back fist strike, reverse punch. Front kick, back fist, reverse punch. Front kick, back fist, reverse punch. Once again. On the turn, lower block and reverse punch. Okay, now we have the foundation for combination number one. Basically, it consists of five techniques. Block punch, kick, strike, and punch. Visualize, low block, reverse punch, kick, back fist, reverse punch. Let's do part one again. Ready? Part two. Very good. Now let's do it completely. All five techniques. On the turn, Guido. This is what combination one consists of. Once again. Ready position. And show. Now important in the training is not only to have a format where you can continue to practice your techniques. You know, if we followed the traditional method of training, we would do each of those techniques individually, forward and back. The block by itself, the kick by itself, as you're well aware of. One of the biggest complaints I have on the part of people today when I, tell, when I ask them, why aren't you practicing more, particularly for black belts, particularly for advanced students of the martial arts, everybody in the 90s, of course, is faced with less time available. You will find today in, these, in this session that these combinations will give you a variety of techniques which you're required to perform at, but it will actually, it's been put in a format which allows you to do them in significantly less time. So we're dealing with the time element here. All right, but what's also important is to make sure that we have the right timing. Learning the right technique in and of itself is not all that enables us to achieve a higher level of proficiency. For that, I use a counting method which basically enables us to better understand what the proper timing should be. I, I count in this fashion, two. What, what that implies is all techniques that I label will be done quickly whereas those techniques that I might count or label as a two will take more time. Let's say we apply that basic counting technique or timing technique to the low block reverse punch. The block will be done at the count of and the punch will be done at the count of two. 
in between the count, of course, is what I, have, what I call extension time. That's time that you're not moving. So we go back to combination one again. It consists of five techniques. The proper timing for it would be cut, 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 two. Therefore, it'll look this way. Shoop, 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 Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Now, in addition to visualizing the techniques that we just performed, let's get a sense of the, of the timing. Now, here again, it goes back to looking and listening with the intent to learn. Ready, position. Picture the technique in your mind. Remember, the count's going to be what, 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 two. We're going to perform combination one again. Ready? Prepare for turning. Once again. On the turn. Huddle. Ready position. Very good. Very good. Step back, please. Sir. Very good. Jumbay. Okay. What was the second block you learned when you first entered? the Tang Sudo karate system. Your first block was what? Slow block, sir. OK, what was the second block you learned? High block. The high, high block. block. That's exactly how combination two starts. So, so you're able to remember these without really having to have a handout by remembering the order in which, generally, these basic techniques are taught in most hard style karate systems. Your first stance you were taught was the forward stance. First block was the low block and the reverse punch. And the first kick was the the front kick, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, generally, in most hard style systems, in addition to striking with the hand, we strike with the elbow. Yes. So that'll be the second technique that we will cover in combination two. All right. Yes, so the yes, first, first part of combination two, which I've broken up, in introducing these to you, I've broken up into mini sets. The entire combination is called a combination set, but I've broken it up into respective parts so that we can visualize the mini sets which the combination consists of. So part one of combination two would consist of the high block followed by a reverse elbow strike. Ready. Forward again, please. Same technique. On the turn, Guido. Ki hop. On the turn, Guido. Very good. Let's proceed now with the next several techniques for the second part of this combination. Reach out, indicate, get in your hands in position to grab for a knee strike. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's perform those two actions by my count. Yes, sir. After the knee strike, be sure to place your foot just to the front of the other. Now, what was the second kick you learned early in the, your, the, the initial process of your learning? Front kick, knee kick, and then? Side kick. Okay, exactly what I'd like you to perform now. Perform the side kick and finish the kick in a post chamber position. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Ready? Very good. And ready position. All right, let's proceed again. Mini set number one high block, reverse elbow. Timing. Okay? Ready? Mini set number two, three techniques. Reach for preparation for a knee kick, perform the knee strike, and then the side kick. The timing, what, what, what. One more time. Very good. Now, we started with the high block and reverse elbow, right? Yes, sir. That's exactly how we're going to finish this. Ready? OK. Mini set number one, high block, reverse elbow. Very good. Prepare for a knee kick. Apply a knee kick and follow with a side kick. The timing. What? 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 Ready? And complete the same way we, we started. High block, reverse elbow. OK. In order to maintain your stability, you need to maintain the proper amount of tension and energy in your feet and hands. Not stiffen your body. but. Basically, yes, keep your weapon stable, OK? Yes, sir. All right, part one of combination two, on the turn. OK, visualize, right? Visualize. 
Part one of combination two. What? Part two. Two. And part three. Eight. OK, very good. So combination two consists of basically seven techniques. The timing. Punt two on the turn, all the way. Ta-da! <laughs> Finish each exhale so that the extension of each technique is very clear. <laughs> Don't move until the exhalation is complete. Is that clear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Forward, please. <laughs> on the turn, all the way. Ta-da! Step back, please. Sir. Yes, sir. And at ease. The intent of these combinations from the beginning were never to use it as a method for teaching people skills, the, the martial arts skills. The basic assumption made here, before anybody can learn these combinations, is that they can come to the mat already have some basic skills. These combinations are a more modern scientific approach to ancient martial arts training. The traditional method for the techniques, as you know, that you just performed would have taken considerably more time. Now, is, is there anything else that you're beginning to notice as you're working out here? How about your, your physical condition at this point? Are you beginning to feel physically challenged? Yes, sir. Okay, so originally when I put this together, I put it together as a maintenance program. People work years and years and years to develop basic skills. Then, because of the lack of time, they found that there was a less tendency after they became proficient to put, devote the time they did previously to continuing to practice. So the first thing I wanted to address was to get at the time thing. Okay. Along the same lines, um, I found that, that they weren't keeping their condition up. You notice, in just a few minutes, your respiratory system has already been affected. Yes, sir. Your cardiovascular system is probably already affected as well. So this is good for an endurance training as well. Basically, karate training, for the most part, is anaerobic. This is about as close as we can get it to be, being very aerobic. OK, so let's work on those first two combinations again, OK? Yes, yes sir. sir. Ready, position. Chumbe! Combination number one with the proper timing. Once again. Hey! Combination two. On the turn. Ta-da! On the turn. Ta-da! Ready, position. Puddle. One step back, please. Sir. Quickly. Sir. All right, very good. So we know that the, first, the way you're going to remember these is not because I'm going to give you a handout. You remember these because if you follow the basic sequence that we originally used when you were introduced to these techniques, that'll help you to kind of do a gestalt, to how to remember which techniques are involved in each of the combinations. That being the case, the first combination started with a low block, second with a high block. What do you suppose the third tech combination is going to begin with? High block. Middle block. Middle block. Right, the middle block middle block okay and then we've already basically covered the forward stance and when you were kicking you were kind of in a one in, in a modified horse stance right yes, sir. Yes, but sir. we haven't covered what we call the cat stance so that's what we really would like to to do at this point yes, I'm gonna start the technique or combination with a, a good cat stance with an inside outside block and this time we want to be able to become ambidextrous that's another thing that these combinations will enable you to do you're not going to be just left-sided or right-sided. These combinations, the way they were designed, forces you to have to become ambidextrous. By the same token, it is really to your benefit to be able not only to strike with each hand, but to kick either with the leg in back, as you've performed so far, but also with the leg in front. And that's how combination three is designed to, 
the, the things that we're designed to cover in combination three. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Again, I've broken it up into too many sets in this case. All right. Ready position, chombe. Mini set number one consists of an inside block with cat stance, followed by a front kick with the front foot. Maintain your stability. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you heard me, you saw me, right? You recorded. Now visualize. Part one. <laughs> Very good. Part one again, moving forward. <laughs> Very good. On the turn, part one, Guido, ta-da! And part one again. Hey! Very good. On the turn, part one. Ta-da! And part all. Okay, now, in today's class, what kicks have we covered so far? Front kick, sir. Front kick, what else? Side kick, sir. Oh, what do you think follows? Round, round. Roundhouse kick, that's right. Well, how did you know that? You knew that because that's basically the order you f we followed when we first introduced kicking to you. And regardless of system, regardless of style, that kind of tends to be the, the case. That's really going to be the next technique now. Actually, I'm going to break this up into three mini sets. The second mini set is going to be just the kick, just the roundhouse kick. Okay? All right, can I ask you, Jombe, ready position? So part one again was the inside block and front snap kick. Follow that with a round kick here, and hold your position. Very good. And then, combination three will again include the inside block, but this time we're going to strike with a reverse punch from the cat stance. All right, ready position, Paro. Back up, please. All right, Chongbei, ready position? Part one, inside block. Front snap kick, front foot. Okay, part two, only the roundhouse kick, keep stable. And part three. Very good. Moving forward again in parts. Mini set number one. Two. Three. Very good. Can you visualize all of that? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay, visualize the techniques in this, this type of counting. What, 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 two on the turn. Ta-da! Very good, on the turn. Ta-da! And pot already positioned. Very good. Take a couple of steps back, sure. really, please. Very good. Very good. Excellent. All right. So we have already done the low block. Yes, sir. The high block and the inside block. What will follow? Outside block. Outside block. That's right. Block which comes from the outside in. We've covered the forward stance. Yes, we've sir. covered the horse stance. And we've covered the cat stance. All of these things are part are fundamental to initial instruction in, in hard style martial arts training. But in combination four, we want to repeat or emphasize the horse stance. Yes, and again, other ways of using the elbow other than the way we've used previously. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, part one of combination four begins with an outside block into a horse stance, followed by a straight elbow. And notice the footwork. I'm advancing all the time. Okay? Yes, sir. yes, sir. All right, ready position? <laughs> Left side forward, part one. Timing, punt, punt. Ready? <laughs> Very good. Moving forward, right side. <laughs> and left side on the turn. Ta da! <laughs> okay, let's keep the timing together. Okay, Mr. Brown, remember that it's the key to timing is remembering the, time, the counts that I've taught. But you also have to listen for this, this time in between the counts, because that gives you a, a good concept of how much time you want to stay in position. Sir. Okay? Sir. Notice when I counted, I didn't go, what, what? That would cause you to, what, what? It's what, what? So listening to the period where there is no count also gives you a better sense of timing. The timing again, what, what? Notice the space in between. Forward, right side. 
Shoop, shoop. Very good. On the turn. Ta-da! Shoop, kick. All right. <coughs> we covered the front kick so far, back and front leg. Yes, sir. We covered the side kick. Yes, sir. We covered the roundhouse kick. Yes, sir. All right. Sir. Now we want to cover the, the side hook kick. And you're all familiar with this kick. Again, I, the, the purpose today was not, is not, I should say, to, to teach you techniques, but the basic assumption that you know the basic kicks involved. Again, we're going to proceed with moving towards the, behind the back leg, articulating the kick, and holding the post chamber position. Yes, sir. I'd like you to do that and maintain the position at this point. Yes, sir. And from here, we're using a back knuckle strike. Okay, on the turn, part one of combination four. Nice, solid horse stance footing, okay? Yes, yes sir. sir. Guido, ta-da! Turn. Okay, just the kick. Okay. And as we step forward, back knuckle strike. Okay, we'll have to do that again, right? Left side forward, outside block, straight elbow. Side hook kick. And back knuckle strike. Okay, on the turn, we don't trap. Okay, some of you are having trouble staying up. Part of it is because of the way your hands are after you finish. Remember, gravity is constantly pulling down on your body. Yes, but the closer you bring your hands and your feet to the center, the less gravitational pull will have a negative effect on you. Puddle. All right, let's cover that again. Take a yes, couple of steps forward, please. Very good, that's fine. And ready position. Okay, if I can ask you to begin first. Yes. Part one of combination four. Even though this is handwork, you really need to concentrate on good, sound, stable footing. Uh, right side forward this time, please, Mrs. Holder. Very good. And your side hook kick. And your back knuckle strike. Very good. On the turn, do the entire combination. One, one, one. Two. Don't forget, that's your last technique. That's generally a two. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On the turn, Miss Holder, on your own. Ta -da! And puddle ready position. Very good. Thank you very much. Move back. Are we ready? Yes, sir. Very good. Combination set number four, all the way, without the count this time. Yes, okay? Sir. You know the right timing. The right timing is punt, 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 two. Concentrate on the stability of weapons. On the turn, ready? On the turn. Yeah, very good. Tumbe, ready position. What are the four basic kicks in any type of hard star karate system? Front kick. Side kick. Back 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 kick. Back. Yeah, we haven't done the back kick yet, though, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and so far, we haven't basically done our fighting stance either. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so combination five now, basically, is fairly simple to remember. If you remember that the techniques you just listed for me, or stated, are exactly what combination five consists of. The front kick, the side kick, the roundhouse kick, and the back kick. All off of the forward or the front uh, fighting position. We're going to take it individually. Yes, sir. Move back with your right foot into your sparring position. <coughs> Let's cover each kick individually. One might command, apply a front kick, and proceed forward with a sparring position. Once again. On the turn. In this particular combination, we're kicking, all the kicks are being done from the back foot and the back leg. Yes, sir. Okay, the second kick, side kick, side kick and then sparring position. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, later in this session, we'll also be doing those kicks with the front leg as well. In fact, we've done the front kick off of the front leg, but in, in more advanced combinations beyond number five, we'll be doing those same kicks off the front leg as well. On the turn, <laughs> and the third kick. A round kick. Very good. Kick with the ball of the foot, please. Once again. Right. On the turn. Okay, now we want to do the back kick. 
Now, I'm talking about the straight back kick, the one where the, the kick is actually done on a straight line rather than in a circle. Is that clear? Yes, sir. sir. Okay, very good. Very good. Okay, looks like we really need to learn these combinations, right? I mean, if nothing else, maybe these combinations will help you to improve some of the kicking where you're not feeling so proficient. We don't All right, very good. Ready, position. Okay, what were the first two techniques you did? Front kick, side kick. Side kick. Very good. And we did it off of the? Back leg, sir. Right, and spine position, yes, correct? Yes, All right, why don't we combine those two? You know, the whole format here has been to break down the the combination into mini set. So mini set number one for combination five will consist of the front kick followed by the side kick, followed by sparring position. Yes, sparring sir. position moving back with your right foot. Okay, good weapon articulation. Front kick, side kick, and sparring position. Once again. Very good. On the turn. Once again. Hey! We don't trap. And what were the second two kicks we did earlier? Round kick and back kick. Round kick and back kick. Okay. Concentrate on what for stability? Seeing the perfect image. Okay. Not seeing yourself stagger. See yourself doing the technique the way you want. Visualize yourself doing the technique the way, you, the way you want it to be in your final outcome. Yes, Round kick followed by back kick and sparring position. <laughs> right, you need to be results oriented. You know, in Western culture, we kind of process oriented. If you start to focus more on how to do the roundhouse kick and how to do the back kick, rather than visualize before you act on the results you want, you're going to get so involved in movement, you'll be not really focusing all your energy and attention on the final product you want. So you see, I want you to be more outcome oriented. See the perfect round kick completion and the perfect back kick completion and the perfect sparring position completion. Don't get involved in process, yes, OK? Sir. Ready? <laughs> Very good. On the turn, ta-da! <laughs> OK, now we're going to do mini set number one of combination five. Visualize the perfect front kick, followed by the perfect side kick, followed by the perfect sparring position. We're not perfect. Don't get me wrong. Human beings are incapable of being perfect, but we can always strive for utopia. See, the fact that we're imperfect should not be an excuse on our part to strive for achieving perfection. Okay? So front kick, side kick, and sparring position. Very good. Roundhouse kick, back kick, and sparring position. Very good. Do we do All right. Essentially, you basically have combination five then. It consists of the front, side, round, and back kick. You only need to do one sparring position now and it's completion. All right. What did you need to do right now before you act? Visualize. Visualize. Very good. Combination five. you're first learning something, it's not advantageous to go at the speed that you normally use when you feel you have a certain degree of proficiency. Right then, you were a little less successful because you were really moving at a much faster pace than would enable you to learn this combination and perform your best. So I'd like you to, rather than performing at your optimum speed or high speed, bring it down a little bit to a more moderate pace, but don't decrease your energy yes, or, or your intent. We don't trap. Very good. We don't trap. And puddle ready position. Very good. And and stand at ease, please. You know we're the what? Instant culture, right? Western culture, instant milk, instant chocolate. There's no instant karate. And what happens is, though, out of habit, we tend to sometimes fall into the habit of always getting in a hurry. Okay? You know, it, it took a long time for you to get to the point where you can perform the techniques as you're doing today. Today, we're really not covering in this session how to perform these techniques. It's really an opportunity 
to apply skills and techniques which you've taken many, many hours and years to achieve. But what is different today is the format that I put these techniques together in. That, that newness, that little bit of newness, okay, is, is sometimes getting in the way of your remembering that, particularly when you're learning something that's fairly new to you, you need to take the adequate time to ensure that you learn it properly. Remember, the way you, the approach you take when you first learn something is going to have a lasting effect. It's like you never have a, very solemnly do you have a second opportunity to make a first impression. Well, it's the same thing when you're doing martial arts. Remember, what you're doing now is developing some muscle memory. You want to get to the point where you can eventually practice this so often that you can do it intuitively. Your body will remember how to do it. So I would really encourage you to take the, the amount of time that's necessary to really begin to develop the muscle memory to learn combination five, or in fact, all of the combinations. All right, Chombe, ready, position. But remember, because we might slow down, doesn't necessarily mean we have to decrease the force. I'd like you to keep the energy level high. Sparring position. <laughs> Moderate tempo. One of the things that can help you is to make sure that you don't allow the foot to return while you're still exhaling, like I just demonstrated. See, that would not be something I would encourage. But that you would finish the exhale before you allow that retrieval to occur. Combination five. Ready? Moderate tempo. Much better. Ready? Ta-da! Be results. Be outcome oriented. Ta-da! Ready? Position. Man, one basic rule of thumb for me, at ease, please. As we always say, speed kills on the highway while also kills in the dojo. Always also kills, kills in the class. So don't, don't get so into speed that you lose sight of what the goal is, quality. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Again, it goes back to some basic principles of martial arts training, which can carry outside of the class into your daily living. Don't want to rush things. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, very good. All right, ready position? Now we're going to go into combination set number six. Now combination set number six begins with a back knuckle application that is really not a back knuckle strike. When we're striking, basically, we use the back fist or knuckle from the top. Okay. Very few styles, in fact, use this technique anymore, but it's really... Would you step back, please? And, and execute a, round, a roundhouse kick with your instep yes, to my head. Okay. A real powerful yes, type of kick. Then, and a technique such as this may not be necessarily strong enough to really uh, basically defend against a strong, powerful kick like that. Not even this might say, again, I can, feel the, I can feel the results of that kick against my arm. And, and you know, then that defeats our basic self-defense principles. But this type of technique is a power technique where you see I use my knuckle not just to block his technique. Slow motion, please. Yes, sir. But you see, you see, if you could see his face, it's grimacing there because he, he basically threw his shin into my knuckle. You see? <laughs> All right, and you see, so it's a back knuckle defense action. All yes, right, sir. ready position. So let's just treat that all by itself as a technique. In a horse stance, left side forward. Very good. Proceed by crossing in front and executing a side kick followed by a back knuckle strike. Now, because it's a strike rather than a defensive action, the back knuckle strike will come from? Very good. And the timing is hup, hup, hup. Very good. All right, let's proceed. Coming forward with a back knuckle defensive action, right side. Followed by a side kick and a back knuckle striking action. Very good. On the turn, ready? Forward. And on the turn. And ready position. All right, at ease, please. OK. Now, the second part of that combination will begin with the back kick. 
Now you'll remember that you're in what stance at that point? Horse stance. Horse stance. Right, you're in a horse stance, basically having completed your kick. In order to effectively execute a back kick from here then, just stay in your position, please. Sir. It's going to require you to remember that having it properly set up with the right stance is essential. Notice I did a back kick followed by a back kick. And right. See now see if you're confused, maybe you're not following the principles we talked about. Yes, if you'd have watched me, rather than be dependent on me telling you what I just performed, then you really begin to understand better those principles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, you all had the opportunity to watch with the intent to learn. Yes, sir. The techniques involved from this position was back, back kick, followed by back fist and strike. Yes, sir. What stance was I in when I did the back fist after the kick? Um, horse all right, it was the horse stance, right? So, basically, I was in the horse stance. I set it up for a back kick. I did the back kick, and I did a horse stance. A lot of people, when they don't watch properly, they might have thought I came off this way. Then when I did the reverse punch, there was also what? Another transition that occurred here. All right. Let's go into this technique, please. Yes, sir. Ready position. All right, just the back fist defense action. Now all we're going to practice here for a few minutes is the second part of combination six, which begins with? Back kick. A back kick, followed by? Back kick. Back knuckle strike and reverse punch. All right, the timing is one, one, two. Ready? And with this back kick is the kick is is from the bottom heel, not the edge of the foot, which would be a side kick, yes, not the back of the heel, which would be a spinning kick. All right, stepping forward, back knuckle strike. Focus now on what? Perfect image. Back fist. Excuse me. Back kick. Back fist and strike. All right, let's go back to part one of combination number six. First, we'll do the back knuckle defensive action, followed by a cross step and side kick, followed by back knuckle strike. Ready? Good. Second part. Very good, on the turn. First part. Very good. Now, visualize. We looked, we listened with the intent to learn, we recorded, and we imitated. Picture that experience in your mind. Now it's time to practice on the turn, all the way. Not our temple. Okay. Let's get harmony. Yes, sir. The timing is what? 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 Two. Forward. On the turn. Ta-da! Once more. Position. Three steps back, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. You find this somewhat challenging? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, normally, you know, if we if we just follow the traditional approach to practicing these techniques, just in the time we've already covered in this session, the six combinations. All right. I mean, have you have you really stopped to think here for a minute how many techniques we covered and how many repetitions we did? And, and match that up with the amount of time we actually have been performing, you'll see that it's a lot less time, but it's just as comprehensive in terms of the numbers of repetitions and how challenging it is both mentally and physically, right? Yes, sir. Because my definition of practice, which over the years I used to always say to people, you need to practice more, practice more, practice more. And I made the assumption that people understood what practice was. But in the 90s, I'm finding more and more and more, more people are entering martial arts training who have had no other experience with any other kinds of physical activity. So it's not enough to tell people just to practice because they don't understand what practice is. If you haven't been in any kind of team sport or any kind of activity which requires 
you to do repetitive exercise for proficiency. You really don't know what practice is. You think you might, but for most people, they go over a technique or a form one or two times, and they think that constitutes practice. But today, in this session, you're being introduced to the combinations. But more than that, you notice that the, the, act, the, the format of these combinations is requiring you to do a significant amount of repetition. repetition. Okay, And when you do a significant amount of repetition, it's only going to be beneficial when repetition is done repetitively to the point where it becomes physically challenging. Now, move back couple of steps, please. One, two. Very good. Ready position. <laughs> now, what's the other challenge that you're dealing with today? I mean, you're already beginning to feel the physical challenge, right? Mr. Mr. Tchaikovsky? Yes, sir. Mental challenge, sir. What do you mean by that? More concentration. Well, you are learning. You're not learning any of these techniques for the first time. All of these techniques are, are not new to you, but what's new to you are the combinations. So that's mentally challenging, isn't it? Yes, sir. So, so one of the mental challenges would be the fact that you're trying to remember these combinations now, which normally, if they were part of your muscle memory, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Is there anything else about this, this session that makes it mentally challenging? Annette? Mr. If it's physically challenged, and maybe you might get tired. I can't hear you. Maybe you're getting tired. Yes, sir. OK. Then it becomes mentally challenged to see how much longer is this session going to go. Master Apple continues to make us, it seems like we've done about 500 techniques here, and how much more is it going to get out of us? So the second mental challenge, in addition to learning something new, is the mental challenge of what? Just being able to survive sometimes, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But if, when you've been in martial arts for a long time, you recognize that it's important to practice, and getting through those physical and mental challenges are essential because that's the only way you progress. That's the only way you progress. So you don't mind being challenged physically and mentally because you know that in time, that will always result in positive change. That will always result in positive change. One of, the problems, or one of the problems I see with computers these days is that for our youth in learning environments, it doesn't require them to do as much memorization and repetitive training because it's stored in the computer. So their, their learning is kind of more short-term rather than long-term. When I was in school, I used to hate the rote method where we had to always memorize dates. We can relax, please. Memorize dates, the capitals of, of states, etc. But here I am at an advanced age, <laughs> and, and I've never forgotten those dates. So let me give you a definition of practice here, which can be a rule of thumb, which you'll find that today, the purpose of this session was to introduce you to some combinations for long-term benefit and as a maintenance program for you, which doesn't require a lot of time, but is very comprehensive, and which you will find both physically and mentally challenging. Because another part of this class today is to ensure that you understand exactly your responsibility as it relates to practice. So repeat after me, please. I know I've practiced. I know I've practiced. When I have done a significant number of repetitions, which causes me to be physically challenged and mentally challenged, but which in time will always result in positive change. See, that's an original statement on my part. Now, let's see if some of the things we did today really applies here. Whenever I had you learn and practice a combination, did I jump from one combination to the other? No sir. no, sir. No, what happened? I made you do it over and over again. In fact, I broke it down to its basic parts, had you practice those basic parts before putting it all together. But I still, still didn't jump from combination one to combination two till I was satisfied that you did what? A significant number of? Repetitions. Exactly. So significant number of repetitions doesn't mean that you'll take these combinations in the future and you just do one each of all 10. Repetition means exactly what it means. You have to continue to practice it over and over and over again. We don't have the time to do that, but we are, in fact, getting the opportunity today to somewhat experience what the definition of practice is. Now, as we progress into this class, you find that it's also mentally challenging. And when do you first begin to deal with mental challenge? Right away? 
No, sir. No, sir. Normally, it's when your stamina is being taxed. So you see, repetition needs to be defined as not covering a lot of different things a few times. It's covering the same thing a lot of times. And do it to the point where then it becomes, to be, becomes mentally challenging. And then you know that when you do this consistently, in time, not today, your proficiency in learning, in performing these combinations today is very limited. In time, it will result in positive change if you follow the same approach. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, very good. Chumbe, ready position? <laughs> We're ready for combination seven now. Yes, sir. All right, quite mentally challenging, however, right? Yes, sir. Okay, you notice we haven't done any of our knife hand techniques or open hand defenses, and that's basically what number seven, eight, and nine will be focusing on, in addition to ensuring that we give ourselves that full opportunity to practice our kicking, not only with the back leg, but with the front leg, with the front foot, I should say, okay? All right, combination seven, again, following the same line, we'll begin with the center knife hand defense off of the cat stance. Ready? Left side. Now with the front foot, using the instep as your weapon, perform a roundhouse kick. Very good. Try not to bend, right? Okay, very good puddle. Ready position? Mini set number one then is combined of the center knife hand defense followed by the snapping roundhouse kick with the, with the instep as your weapon. Ready? Okay, very good. Now, we haven't done a spinning heel kick yet either. So from this position, spin, heel kick, and hold your position for now in the post-chamber position, please. And we haven't done our outside-inside crescent kick either. And ready position, please. Take a couple of steps back. Yes, sir. Quickly. All right, so let, let's put that together. Again, visualize. Ready position. Combination seven, part one, consists of a center knife hand defense, followed by real dynamic front snapping round kick, right? Yes, sir. What's the weapon? Instep. 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 Ready. <laughs> Very good. Followed by a spinning heel kick and a crescent outside inside kick. <laughs> Very good. And knife hand defense only, stepping forward. <laughs> okay, so now we've got two parts of a three-part combination. Okay, part one of combination seven again, on the turn please. The timing is <laughs> Ready? <laughs> oh, good. Part two. <laughs> All right, keep in mind of the weapon, the back of the heel and the arch of the foot, and just the knife hand defense. Very good. On the turn, just the first two actions, please. Ta-da! <laughs> and let's stop there for a moment. Puddle, ready position? Excellent, excellent. Okay. Step back, please. One, one, two steps back, please. Ready position? Now I'm going to complete that combination the same way we started. In the knife, center knife hand defense, but we're going to follow it with what we call a yaksudo in Korean system or a, a ridge hand strike. Okay, a ridge hand strike. All right, let's just do that, those two actions. Those two actions. Did you watch? Yes, yes sir. sir. Did you listen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, did you record? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ready? <laughs> Very good, Paddle. Ready position? Right side forward again. And ready position. Left side ready again. And ready position. Right side ready again. And ready position. Notice I'm not giving you a lot of time to think. Think in the academic sense. Because it's not necessary. The only way I want you to use your mind is to remember to visualize. Then let your body respond. Part one. Center knife hand defense. Front foot round house kick. Very good. Same timing. Punt, punt again. We're doing a spinning heel, followed by a crescent, outside, inside crescent kick, and stay in the post chamber position. <laughs> Hold your position. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> okay, now we're performing the entire combination, see? But in three parts. Part one visualize on the turn. 
<laughs> okay, speed kills, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so therefore we want to move more. Okay, let's get the right timing going so that we teach the body rather than worrying about speed being our primary emphasis right now. Spinning heel, crescent kick. Knife hand defense, ridge hand. Very good. On the turn, just the knife hand defense, please. Dito, tra! Ready. And ready position. Okay, front line. Okay, the onus is on you now. The timing. As I count it out, I want you to visualize the actions. Hut, 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 two. But let's bring it down a bit. Hut, 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 two. That's where that sound comes in, matching the sound with picture. First line only. Combination seven, all the way. Okay. Let's try to get it more harmony with each other on the turn. Ta-da! On the turn, one technique only. Ta-da! Ready position. Okay, everyone, ready position. Good. Combination seven. Part one. Part two. And part three. All right. Six techniques. Visualize all of them with the right timing and the right speed. On the turn, all the way. Once more. Forward. How do you avoid imbalance and lack of stability? Build perfect balance and stability in your picture. In addition to that, remember to keep the energy in your hands and feet rather than in your limbs and torso. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Combination seven all the way through, please, on the turn. Ta-da! And ready position. Back up, please. Very good. Mr. Mato, if I can ask you yes, to come sir. up. Yeah, any one of these techniques, and we'll cover this more in this session. Sparring position, yes, please. Sir. Okay, any of these techniques in today's combinations can be used in a way that's really, this is demonstrating more in an application mode. He's coming for my face with a punch, see? <laughs> see? And basically, that's part one of combination seven, isn't it? Yes, sir. But theoretically, I could take part two of combination seven and basically attack him also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or I could take part three, Ronald's kick to my head, and counter again, please. Yes, sir. I could counter. You see? So what I'm leading up to is today so far we've thank you. Yes. We've been basically covering what the basics are, but remember, down at the end of the line, we have some application to all of this. Otherwise it's not beneficial for us to practice these skills. All right, would you like to review seven again? Yes, sir. Very good. Chombe, ready? <laughs> Combination seven. I want you to move from a slow to a moderate pace. No faster than that, please. Yes, <laughs> Puddle, ready position. Back up, please. OK. Stability is a problem, but only in time will that improve through? Practice. Practice, Practice. right. And how do we know we practiced? I know I practiced together. Ready? I know I practiced when I've done a sufficient number of repetitions, which caused me to be physically and mentally challenged, but which in time will always result in positive change. All right, ready position. We covered the knife hand defenses now. Same stance. This time, high defense. We'll take it individually this time, individual techniques. Let's see if you can actually learn this combination without a mini set approach. And we're going to high knife hand defense from the cat stance. Shoot. Left side forward. Aye. Shoot. All right, from that position, execute a side kick with the front foot. Be light in your action. Shoot. Very good. You're in position. Extend a ridge hand, transitioning from the cat stance you're in now to a reverse forward stance. Shoot. Very good. Follow with a roundhouse kick. 
followed by a high knife hand defense. Ha! Now, very rarely are these kinds of techniques taught these days, because a lot of people practicing and teaching martial arts only focus on tournaments. But in our system, Tang Sudo, we preserve all of the ancient skills as well. Focus on the three fingers of your hand. This is three finger strike going for this area. And we're going to go all the way out and back. And ready position. Back up. Notice I took a little bit different approach. Rather than breaking it down into mini sets, we did it by the technique. So now I want you to practice using the five principles of looking, listening, recording, and Mimicking. This, we're into mimicking now. Ready? Sir. Position. <laughs> High knife hand defense. Cat stance. <laughs> Good. Solid side kick to the rib cage. <laughs> and ridge hand defense. <laughs> or F hands, rather. <laughs> Round kick. <laughs> and knife hand defense. <laughs> and three finger strike. <laughs> Very good. Let's see if we can do this from memory. On the turn, by the count. On the turn. And ready position. OK. Now, if you had to put it together in a mini set, who would like to take a stab at what the first mini set would be for that combination? Yes, Mr. Grant. High knife hand defense, front snap kick, side kick, right? That's, that's very good. See, if you follow the basic format that's been followed all, all day, it's fairly easy to put these things together for yourself. Yes, the beauty of these combinations are their simplicity. All right, ready position? <laughs> Left side forward, high knife hand defense, side kick. Nice and solid back straight. <laughs> OK. What would you put together as a second combination? Rich hand strike, round kick, sir. Very good. Let's try that. Yes, sir. And your last combination. Can everybody figure it out? Yes, sir. Hey, go for it. Very good. All right. Moving forward. Mini set one, two actions. Hey. And two actions. Hey. All right, let's keep it in a mini set format on the turn. Ta -da! Speed kills. Hey! Forward. Hey! 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 On the turn. Ta da! Auto ready position. Sure, very good. All right, at ease, please. Now, you know, originally when I put these combinations together, they were not intended to be a format for teaching people how to do skills. I said that earlier today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they're a perfect format for also evaluating what your skills are at this time as well. You notice in the lower combinations, you did that fairly well. You weren't having as many difficulties with stability, focus, etc. Now that we're getting to the higher level of combination, some of the techniques are not maybe as proficient as you would like them to be. So you see, these combinations are also a way of providing you with a check and balance system. By using these combinations, you'll discover for yourself those skills which you need to focus a little more on that you need to perfect using yeah. maybe the traditional approach. For instance, if, if the roundhouse kick is giving you difficulty, you need to extrapolate it from the combination and practice it separately because it's your weak link in the chain here. You're not going to improve your technique doing these combinations if you don't have the basic skill already. Yes, sir. But what will happen in time, these combinations, however, much to my surprise when I first developed them, these combinations did, in fact, enable practitioners like yourself not only to, to be a perfect forum for a maintenance program, but once people had developed good skills and then they used it as a maintenance program, it also enabled them to hire achieve higher levels of proficiency. OK, Mr. Mate, if I can ask you to come yes, forward. This will be the only combination we've done so far using the sparring position. Sparring position. OK. And most of everything we did so far began with a defense. This one will begin with an offense. So you can see, if we were really using this in practical terms, 
there's some real opportunity to develop offensive as well as defensive skills. So that's part one of combination nine. OK, ready position? And don't only go in the sparring position. You need to have the attitude that you're actually in a combative mode now. Hey, kill! You're going to advance. Let's just advance using a knife hand strike. Hey, And again, doing an axe kick, attack with that foot. And ready position. Once again, combat position. Hup. Attack with the knife hand. Hup. Attack with the foot. Hup. See, in the position you're in now, if I said kick with your left foot, what would you probably want to do? Spin around, right? Your natural tendency would be to spin and follow it. Let's do an outside crescent kick with your back foot now. Hup. That's right. That's kind of what your body tells you to do. Yes. But that's not how I designed this one. That's not how I designed this at all. Because one of the things that I found advantageous during my competitive days was not to give my competitors, my opponents, a picture that they were expecting. So we have the element of surprise in this one as well. Okay? Because the natural tendency is to kick with the back leg. However, if I can have Mrs. Holder, please come out, please. And let's set that up again. Ready position? Get into a combat position. Hey! Kill! Attack with the front hand. Hey! Shoot. Attack with the back foot. Hey! Shoot. Now, from here, instead of kicking, spin around. Hey! Step over the leg. Shoot. Then execute a kick. That's not what they're going to expect. And from here, move forward into a secondary attack. Hey! Shoot. Kill! Okay, ready position. What I really would have preferred was the front foot moving. Yes, sir. Okay, we've got to watch with the intent to learn. Yes, sir. OK, so let's do that again. Sparring position. Hey. Kill. First set. One, two. Hey. Shoot. Shoot. OK, second set, we'll begin with step over. I cut that kick short because I was a little close to her. Hey. Over. Shoot. Very good. And then the front hand. Hey. Shoot. Kill. That's right. OK, very good. Thank you. All right, ready position. Visualization. Sparring position. Hup. Knife hand defense followed by an axe kick. Hup. That's one. Now on two, I want you to step over that foot and deliver an outside inside crescent kick from the back. Be sure that your foot ends up in back of you at this time. Okay, bend your knees a little bit more, Mr. Brown. Very good. Hey, step over. And then with your front hand, forward hand. Very good. Finish the set now. We're doing sets. Yes, sir. Okay, ready position again. Okay, back up. Sir. Look, listen, intent sir. to learn. All right, ready position. Sparring position. Mini set number one. And mini set two. Okay, and this is a little bit of modification. Forward hand. Very good. Stronger knife hand defense and key hop. Moving forward from there. Same position. Combination nine, set number one. Uh, very good. On the turn, do we do trap? Okay, visualize and act. Visualize and act. All right, on the turn. And ready position. Do I want you to visualize and act at the same time, Mr. Peters? No, sir. No. It's really important to know what you should be doing before you act versus what you're doing while you're acting. Okay, and before you act, you do all your visualization there. Don't try to talk to your body or guide your body once it's moving. Yes, sir. Once I give you the command to move, now you're into the action mode. Okay? We're going to change it just slightly here. We're going to yes, change sir. it just slightly. Okay, Mr. Monte, if I can have you go back, please. Yes, sir. First mini set's not going to change. Yes, sir. Second mini set, I'm not going to change either. You're going to kick all the way and step to the rear. 
back rather. But this time I'm going to step forward and then counter. This is another variation of way we can do this, and that's how I'd like to do it now. Yes, okay? Sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, very good. All right. Picture that. Ready position? Ready position. Yes, sir. Combat position? Combination nine. Mini set number one. And hey! Very good. Combination nine. Do not step forward, just slide forward. Hey! 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 Step. Are we ready to do it all the way? Yes, sir. Okay, don't say that unless you visualize all the way first. Okay, visual the entire combination in your mind. On the turn, keep it at moderate tempo. Do it all to that? Hey! On the turn, ta-da! And ready position. Back up, please. One, two steps, quickly. All right, very good. Now, those are, the nine, those are nine of the ten combinations. Ready position. See, I, I took the liberty on combination nine to change a couple of things around. See, what I did in combination nine, re relax, please. Sometimes I had you stepping back, sometimes I had you stepping forward, sometimes I used terminology like slide forward, sometimes I used terminology like step forward. What I was testing there was, were you really listening with the intent to learn? Yes, sir. And you notice when we came back, it's okay, I expected to see people make mistakes. Yes, and I don't know anybody that's learned anything without making mistakes. So learning by making mistakes is part of the process. Today, however, I think more and more people are feeling really stressed in the 90s because they focus on the error rather than on the progress. If you think about today's session so far, 90 to 95% of the time you were successful, that's what you need to focus on. If you're 5 to 10% not successful, then that's what you work on. You think about how they apply that, though, in private enterprise and large corporations. They focus on the 10% you're not doing well rather than trying to really boost your morale and, and your, your whole self-image up by congratulating you for the success you have. Keep in mind that true martial arts training is not just confined to what we're learning in the studio. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, very good. Ready position. <laughs> we're going all the way back to combination one now. Okay? I know I've practiced. When I've done a sufficient number of repetitions, which caused me to be most physically and mentally challenged, but which in time will always result in positive change. Okay, we got a long way to go, so keep it at a nice, steady, moderate pace. Combination one. A little bit more time. You know, really. Very nice. Don't rush. Combination two. On the turn. Don't rush. Combination three. Combination four. Forward. On the turn, do the sparring position. Combination five. Stronger kicks. On the turn, combination six. Strong. Combination seven. I want to see seven again. Combination eight. Physically challenging, mentally challenging, but in time, it's going to always result in positive change. Keep that in your mind rather than thinking about tiredness.
Forward, combination eight. <laughs> On the turn, sparring position. <laughs> and combination nine. <laughs> Everybody step forward after the spinning kick, okay? Yes, sir. Combination nine again. Lead off with the front hand. After the kick, step off. Step. On the turn. Hey, go for it. On the turn, sparring position only. And ready position. Okay, bow, please. Down. Step back, please. Sure. Now, would you believe me if I said we're going to jump kick now? Yes, sir. That's exactly what combination 10, but you see, you're at the point now where we just about almost peaked, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But we got through nine combinations. You notice that when we did the nine combinations in a more of an aer aerobic format, you see how quick they went? Yes, sir. You notice how physically and mentally challenging they were? Yes, and you notice it kind of was a, depart, a departure from the traditional karate type of training, which is anaerobic. It was very aerobic. Yes, sir. Okay, now that we've done all nine combinations and you've taken, taken all that mental energy and physical energy to do them, it's time to do num combination number 10. Now, most basic karate systems also do flying kicks. You notice I said flying rather than jumping, and that's the approach you have to take. And we save it to the very end because that really taxes you physically. Do you have any volunteers, first of all, of, uh, that would like to, to go ahead and start to learn combination 10? Okay, could the volunteers step forward and the rest of you step back? Very good. If I can have the second line move a little bit further back, please, yes, and, and bo both of, all of you move back a little further as well. Okay, ready position. We're not going to do all of the flying kicks that we do in the Tang Sudo system or most hard style systems, but we're going to do the basic four jump kicks for combination number 10, starting with the, the flying front kick. Keep in mind the word flying because what I want to really, I want you to all kind of become Air Jordan here, you know what I mean? Look for hang time on this, okay? Sparring position. Okay, this, this mini set approach is really, each kick is the, its own individual mini set, okay? All right, so you're going you're gonna to jump, basically fly into the air with your right foot being your jumping leg and extending the front foot of the the front, the front kick of, off of the front foot for the first kick. <laughs> Very good. Give me some hang time. Once again. <laughs> Very good. That's excellent. On the turn. <laughs> Very good. So we, the first one, we're going to actually kick with the front foot. Yes, On the second one, you're going to elevate yourself, get up into the air using your left foot this time, the back leg. Bring your knee across your chest so you can get a spiraling effect as you elevate, and then execute a side kick. Very good. Try not to bend down. On the turn, ready? Once more, please. Very good. And once more. All right, on the turn. Okay, this time we'll, again, we will elevate or jump with the back leg and kick with the front foot. This time, I want to do a roundhouse kick. As you jump, though, bring your knee of this elevating foot to across your body, and then in extend the, the instep of your foot. Hey. Very good. Nice. Keep your head up hey. as though hanging from a string. Nice. Very nice. On the turn. OK, so this basically gives us a chance to really kind of tune up our kicking. When we do any kind of back kicking, we set ourselves up first, correct? Yes, sir. It's no different for a flying back kick. So let me see the setup. Hup. Now you elevate Aye. and kick. <laughs> All right, and the setup. Aye. And the elevation. Aye. Fly. <laughs> Excellent. On the turn. Ta -da. Ta -da. OK. I want you to jump and front kick with the front foot, followed by a jump and side kick with the back leg. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So the first kick's coming off the front foot. The second kick will come off of the back foot. And then you go into the sparring position. Hey. Very good. All right. Try not to fly forward, fly up. Once again. Hey. Very good. The same approach now on the turn. Ta -da. 
fly upward with the knee going across the body, do a round kick. When you land, you have to do the setup and then the back kick. Is that clear? Yes, sir. sir. Take your time. Hey! All right, see, it's not easy, right? Yes, sir. On the turn, ta-da! Once again. Hey! Right, see, what's making this particularly difficult is all those other combinations you've done already. If you were doing this fresh, it'd be a lot different thing. Okay, on the turn, ta-da! Front kick, side kick, sparring position. Hey, jump, fly, and on the turn, ta-da! And ready position. And step as far back as you can, right there, that's fine, quickly. Ready position. Sparring position. Hey! All right, give yourself time to recover after each jump, because now you have to do all four. Do only one sparring position, however. Take your time. Hey! <laughs> Set up. <laughs> Very good. On the turn. Ta -da! <laughs> Go for your hang time. Hey! <laughs> and the turn. Ta -da! <laughs> Ready position. Yeah, it's one of those combinations that tends to what I call keep you righteous. So, so we had a tremendous success today in all of your actions, but again, jump kicking is something that really a lot of people find difficult to do, so we need to practice those as well. Okay, very good. Chariot. Thank you for joining us in our session today. It is my desire that the seven training principles that you were exposed to in our session will help to lead you to becoming a highly successful martial artist. They are original training concepts and methodologies that were developed by me over the last 50 years of my involvement in martial arts training. I'd like to take this opportunity, however, to express my appreciation to Grandmaster Huang Gi, the founder of the Korean Subakdo Tangsudo Mudokwan Association. That is the system that I've been involved with for the past 37 years. And his teachings and his personal attention have had a profound effect over me over the past several years. Future productions will include training on Qigong and internal development exercises, meditation, and advanced training and teaching methodologies. I hope you will join us at that time. Thank you.